Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Before we get started, please take a moment to click interpretation and choose your language, English or Ukrainian, to make sure you can hear both of today's presentations in your preferred language. Перш ніж ми почнемо, будь ласка, натисніть кнопку переклад і виберіть свою мову, англійську чи українську, щоб ви могли почути обидві сьогоднішні презентації тією мовою, якою забажаєте. If any questions come into your mind as you listen to today's webinar, please feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and type them in there. We'll be asking questions of today's panelists as time allows. Якщо під час сьогоднішнього вебінару у вас виникнуть запитання, скористайтеся кнопкою запитання та відповіді внизу екрану та напишіть запитання там. Ми поставимо ці запитання сьогоднішнім учасникам дискусії, якщо дозволить час. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, the floor is yours to open our event. Thank you. And thank you, Alyssa. And we'll hear a lot more from Alyssa today. Uh, thank you for joining this World Council of Credit Unions virtual event, Crisis Response Efforts by Worldwide Foundation for Credit Unions, Stories from Ukraine and Turkey. My name is Greg Newman, Director of Communications for World Council. Through its Project Stormbreak initiative, Worldwide Foundation for Credit Unions provides relief support across the globe to credit cooperatives facing crises. In 2022, the out, with the outbreak of Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine, WFCU launched the Ukrainian Credit Union Displacement Fund to support over 100 credit unions and their members in Ukraine. In February 2023, after two major earthquakes struck southern Turkey on the same day, WFCU launched its Turkish Cooperative Earthquake Relief Fund and worked closely with the Central Union of Agricultural Credit Cooperatives of Turkey to assess the greatest needs for their 150 cooperatives located in the impacted region. Worldwide Foundation Grant Management Consultant Alyssa Stetsician, who you just heard from, has worked hard to make those assistance programs a reality for credit unions in both of those countries. Along with her role with the Worldwide Foundation, Alyssa has also worked for the USAID World Council of Credit Unions Credit for Agriculture Producers, or CAP, project in Ukraine since 2017, and currently holds the title of Lead Communications Consultant for the project. She'll be taking you the rest of the way and we'll introduce you to the speakers from Ukraine and Turkey who are going to explain how they have put WFCU's assistance to good use. So, Alyssa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Greg, for your warm welcome. Again, hi everyone. I'm truly honored to be here today at the webinar and share what we collectively achieved under the Worldwide Foundation for Credit Unions Project Stormbreak Initiative. As Greg mentioned before, through this initiative, the Worldwide Foundation provides relief support across the globe to financial cooperatives facing crisis. In 2022 and 2023, a major crisis hit Ukraine and Turkey. As a grant management consultant with the foundation, um, I have had a privilege of supporting the implementation of relief programs, both in Ukraine and Turkey, which of course have become possible thanks to the generous donations from our credit union global community. And despite the tragic, um, really tragic context of our cooperation, it has been a true honor for me to meet and closely work with two brave women leaders who have joined us today as speakers. Tatiana Yakovenko from Ukraine, serving as a branch development director at the credit union Credit Soyuz, and Burchaka Council, corporate communication specialist with Central Union of Agricultural Credit Cooperatives of Turkey. Um, as you know, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine with a full-scale war in 2022. Uh, the Ukrainian Credit Union Displacement Fund, launched by the Worldwide Foundation right away, received unprecedented amount of donations. Over 1.8 million US dollars have been raised. Um, and as of now, the Worldwide Foundation has already implemented seven programs in Ukraine in cooperation with our partners on the ground. USA Credit for Agricultural Producers Project, implemented by the World Council of Credit Unions, industry associations, and individual credit unions. The credit union Credit Soyuz, which Ms. Titana represents today, and we're going to meet her very soon, is the largest in the country, situated in the central part of Ukraine and serving over 8,000 members. The credit union participated in all the relief programs of the Worldwide Foundation in Ukraine, from fuel distribution to member farmers to purchasing power generators. About all this, the impact of war and the resilience of her credit union and the Ukrainian people, we're going to hear from Titana right now. Titana, 
Happy to have you. The floor is yours. I welcome everyone. I have the honor to present the Credit Union, Credit Soyuz at this event. And first of all, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Worldwide Foundation for Credit Unions for supporting Ukrainian farmers and our members and directly our organization. Let's start with the slide. Thank you. Uh, first, a couple of words about us, uh, but indeed, as was mentioned earlier, we are uh, the largest union, credit union in Ukraine. We are located in the heart of Ukraine and uh, have 14 branches covering the entire central Ukraine. We are the largest union in Ukraine by assets, and therefore we feel our importance in the Ukrainian market of financial services. And this uh, prompts us to seek out various opportunities that are geared towards supporting our credit union members. In 2022 has become a tragic and difficult year for all of Ukraine. Uh, everything happened uh, so suddenly and it was uh, a major shock to all Ukrainians. Many people left our country because of shelling, but uh, many have stayed behind and continued to work despite the difficult situation in the country. Thus, a month after the full-scale invasion, our union resumed lending, realizing that food security, despite the war, depends precisely on agriculture, we focused on agricultural sector. Small farmers and agricultural producers for whom we developed a spe special loan product with a beneficial interest rate. Thus, we did our best and this beneficial interest uh, enabled the farmers to continue their work and they still appreciate it. And thus, through this concerted effort, we were able to overcome the hurdles and hard times. Here in this slide, you see the faces of our happy farmers who were fortunate to receive uh, the assistance from the foundation. The military aggression uh, caused huge volume of problems. Uh, mostly, uh, this was due to the two 2022 sowing campaign. Uh, the entire country felt the lack of fuel. Uh, one, you know, many kilometers long queues. Uh, you could see at the petrol stations, uh, people had to queue up. You know, at the crack of dawn, uh, also there were uh, rations introduced uh, for fuel, and uh, it was only, uh, you could only buy 10 liters per one uh, passenger car and 10, 50 liters per large special equipment. Thus, uh, this was a major problem for farmers and that slowed down their sewing campaign. And of course, this is the foundation uh, 
the this is what they build all of their work on um, union members uh, thanks to our assistants were able to both uh, get the harvest in and also sow the winter crops by the way, at first, most of them did not believe they could actually receive such considerable and important uh, assistance in the form of fuel in this particular case. Some even uh, refused fuel coupons that were printed especially for, for this uh, purpose. Uh, in the end, we were able to explain to people uh, what was happening, and uh, they were so happy, they were lost for words, and especially men, uh, because men, uh, you know, usually realize they have to fend for themselves. And in this case, this assistance was very, very uh, pleasant surprise. It so happened that micro and small agricultural producers do not have access to government support programs, and not just financial, but also information, plus the uncertainty of the economic situation amid military aggression. Uh, this exacerbated the economic situation. And nevertheless, uh, people continued to work during the war. Not everyone fled the country. They continued to work uh, during the war, and uh, the Union supported them uh, by giving out uh, loans on beneficial terms through our uh, Union. We were able to compensate uh, and help them to repay, and people felt uh, more secure. They were able to plan their work and their lives uh, in a more predictable way. As you know, uh, probably the whole world knows, uh, Russian shelling significantly damaged uh, our critical energy infrastructure. The country uh, was plunged into darkness. This has led to regular and long-term power outages. This became a rather complex problem for us and prevented us from working in a normal way. Usually you, you'd get uh, a power during the night, but during the day you would only get uh, one to three hours worth of electricity. And this enabled us to, uh, uh, like, we were unable to give out loans because we could not uh, do the accounting and they could not repay for the same reason. Uh, in addition to that, our employees were forced to work not only without electricity and communication, but also without heating. And this coincided with winter period, so working in an office that was uh, uh, extremely cold, uh, temperature was plus five, that was very hard. Uh, yet, uh, the foundation came up to help us. And we could ensure the stable work of almost all our branches, despite uh, the constant uh, massive shelling across our country. We continued to work, involve new members, give out loans, and and support our agricultural sector um, to our best ability. Uh, 
In addition, thanks to the support of the Worldwide Foundation for Credit Unions, we could partially uh, cover our losses, uh, unpredictable losses to do with the Russian aggression. So we really appreciate this assistance. It was very timely and helpful. And we are extremely grateful for your help. Uh, your foundation uh, is very helpful, very general, very generous. We feel your support. We feel that uh, the world is standing by Ukraine. This inspires us. Uh, gives us hope uh, and faith in the future. So thank you very much for being there. And uh, we hope you help, uh, will help not only Ukraine and Turkey, but other countries in need. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Titana, for a detailed presentation. It is amazing how you and your credit union copes with all the challenges caused by this brutal war. Um, we in the Worldwide Foundation continue to support the Ukrainian credit union movement amid ongoing Russia's war. Um, thanks, of course, to the donations from our credit union community throughout the globe. And this year, we're launching the early recovery programs in Ukraine to help credit unions with digitalization and provide uh, further support to farmers. Also, I'm happy to share that this Monday, the World Bank Foundation signed agreements to provide 500,000 US dollars for lending to the vulnerable groups and for sustainable finance through Ukrainian credit unions. For more detail, um, please go to the World Council's website and check the newsroom section. And the World Bank Foundation will also hold a Ukraine breakout session um, at this year World Credit Union Conference. We will be glad to have you as our guest there as well as at other events hosted by the World Wide Foundation in Vancouver. And to find out more, uh, please visit our website to globalgood.com. And now I'm happy to introduce our colleague from Turkey. Um, as I've mentioned before, Ms. Purchak represents Agricultural Credit Cooperatives of Turkey, a cooperative finance group with over 1,600 individual cooperatives, serving more than 800,000 people across the country. In early 2023, two earthquakes struck thousand Turkey, and through the Turkish Cooperative Earthquake Relief Fund, uh, the Worldwide Foundation raised up to 70,000 US dollars and worked closely with agricultural credit cooperatives of Turkey and Ms. Burchak specifically to assist the, the credit cooperatives located in the impacted region. Um, the first program implemented was to purchase 10 portable offices to replace the destroyed ones and help the cooperatives continue to serve their members. So for us to find out more about the credit cooperative movement in Turkey and the bravery of Turkish people amid devastating earthquakes, I'm glad to invite Ms. Porchak for her presentation. Thank you, Alisa. Uh, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I would like to thank you all for being there with us, sharing our sorrow and showing immense solidarity during a time that we needed it most. I truly appreciate it, but personally, and as a representative of Terum Credit. Uh, so today I'll be giving you some brief information about agricultural credit cooperatives of Turkey, to which I will be referring as ACC or Terum Credit. So please do not be um, confused about it. Then I will explain the effects of earthquakes in agriculture and our earthquake relief efforts. I'll also be talking about the collaboration between Worldwide Foundation for uh, Credit Unions and Term Credit. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them at the end of the session. Founded in 1863, uh, the ACC has been contributing to the development of agriculture and the cooperative movement in Turkey. Our mission is to answer all the needs of farmers by providing the services and goods they require, as well as to market their products. 
And to achieve that, uh, ACC carries out activities that can be summed up under four titles, namely credit, insurance, marketing, and product purchasing. So uh, the ACC has a three-tier structure. We have the central union at the top and the unit cooperatives at the bottom. Cooperatives operate on the regional unions, which coordinate our operations. We are a non-governmental organization. Our capital consists of the shares paid by our members. And also our board of directors is made up of elected farmer members. So the ACC serves 800,000 members through its central union in Ankara, 17 regional unions, and 1,618 unit cooperatives. And in order to provide services to our members in settlements where we do not have a cooperative, we have 204 service bureaus. Uh, we also have 19 subsidiary companies and we also employ more than 20,000 personnel both at the ACC and its subsidiaries. So here you can see the regional unions on the map. Uh, we have a wide network which enabled us to take action immediately after the earthquakes. As you know, two devastating earthquakes hit Turkey and Syria on February the 6th. More than 50,000 people lost their lives, as officially reported. 11 provinces were affected by the earthquakes, which, which struck the Pazarcık and Elbistan districts of Kahramanmaraş with magnitudes of 7 by 7 and 7.6, uh, respectively. So uh, the affected region is known as the Fertile Crescent, and it is responsible for 20% of the country's agriculture. Uh, it contributes 15.3% to the national GDP. The population is over 50 million in these 11 provinces, and 14% of the population is farmers. We have 163 cooperatives with more than 90,000 members in these 11 provinces impacted by the earthquakes. Uh, 42 uh, structures belonging to these cooperatives were heavily damaged and 19 buildings were destroyed uh, or collapsed actually. Uh, in addition to that, we have 160 cooperative supermarkets in the quite affected region. And 42 of the supermarkets have been destroyed or se severely damaged. Uh, the agricultural sector in general suffered damage and losses of uh, 6.3 uh, 6 billion US dollars. And the recent floods have only worsened the situation. Through the insurance policies issued by our companies, cooperatives, the, and the insurance claims filed, we can assume that our members, personnel and cooperatives have suffered from 200 million Turkish Liras damage. So I can say that, um, well, let, let me just explain what we did after the earthquakes. We were quick to step in to support humanitarian aid and search and rescue efforts in collaboration with AFAD, uh, that is the Disaster and Emergency Management Authority in Turkey. We started distributing goods from our warehouses in the disaster affected region as an initial response to meet the uh, uh, basic needs of the survivors. So 50 truckloads of products were distributed and then we sent out 14 trucks with filled with food and hygiene products to the region. Uh, and we also have a mining company that's called Bibretash Madan, uh, which sent a team of miners to provide support and logistical assistance to the rescue teams in the disaster area. Uh, meal centers were established to cater for the sur survivors. Uh, we also distributed animal feed in the region. Um, what else we did? 
Well, uh, the loan debts of agricultural producers in the earthquake hit cities uh, have been postponed. And then, sorry, we move on, please. Oh, yeah. In order to continue the activities of cooperatives, which were destroyed or damaged, and to create a safe environment for our cooperative personnel, tents and uh, containers were di dispatched to the area. Uh, they are used as service buildings and for the accommodation needs of our colleagues. So throughout this process, we felt the support of the international community, managers of Worldwide Foundation for Credit Unions and World Council of Credit Unions reached out to us right after the earthquake. Uh, we held an online meeting to discuss what the situation was and what could be done together. A fundraising campaign called Turkish Cooperative Earthquake Relief Fund was launched to support Turkish cooperatives affected by the earthquakes. And within this scope, WFCU granted uh, 41,000 US dollars, and together we designed a project to purchase portable uh, office units for cooperatives whose buildings were destroyed or damaged. And in order to do that, we carried out damage assessment first. Technical delegations visited unit cooperatives notified by the regional unions. Uh, the required number of containers were determined depending on the damage caused and the size of the cooperatives. Cooperatives whose uh, operations halted were selected, and upon the delivery of containers, cooperatives resumed their operations. So seven portable office units were sent to four cooperatives located in Kahraman Maraj, that was the epicenter of the earthquakes. And three containers were sent to three cooperatives in Malatya. Those containers have two rooms, a bathroom and kitchen, and they offer a safe working environment and shelter for cooperative staff. And these seven cooperatives offer service to 5,345 members in the region, so uh, they can continue um, agricultural production. Thanks to your support, we are able to restart our operations at safe office units so that our members can have access to agricultural inputs and finance resources. By this way, they can continue agricultural production. We keep them also uh, economically viable by purchasing their produce, and they do not need to worry about access to markets. And of course, we all contribute to the food security, which was a big concern after the earthquakes. We keep on working to mitigate the impacts of the disaster and strengthen our cooperatives. So that is it. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much, dear Burchak. And uh, I truly admire all the work you and your colleagues have been doing to support those in need. And in the Worldwide Foundation, we're going to continue our cooperation with uh, agricultural credit cooperatives of Turkey and hope to implement another program to mitigate further negative consequences of the earthquakes. Again, for all our updates, please check the Worldwide Foundation website, which is doglobalgood.org. Uh, not as I said previously, sorry for that. One can see I haven't worked for this organization long enough. <laughs> Uh, so with the presentations done, um, I think we're ready to proceed with questions to our speakers. Craig, I'm giving the floor back to you for moderation and thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. And, uh, you know, one of the, I just want to say one of the things that you realize in these times of tragedies, which have, been, these have both been obviously horrible tragedies, one continues to be, um, and what you, what you don't realize is some of the relationships that you can build out of them. And those are some of the real positives. I feel like what's happened with uh, particularly the, the Turkish credit cooperatives, has, that has been a real positive, not only for the foundation, but for World Council as well. Um, first question is for Burchak. Uh, it's from Olga, who asks to, for you to please explain the difference 
between the 1,618 um, individual cooperatives and the 17 regional offices that you have? So we have 100, uh, 1,618 cooperatives. Those are unit cooperatives. Uh, they're di directly in touch with the members. So uh, farmers visit our cooperatives, they get what they need uh, through the cooperatives. And above them, we have 17 regional unions. Uh, if you have seen the map, we have certain areas um, I mean, we, we have divided it into certain areas and then uh, cooperatives that are operating within that area are directly linked to the regional union. So regional union is between, uh, in between central union and the cooperatives. Uh, they're responsible of the operations or uh, coordinating the operations of the cooperatives basically. Prachak, well, how would you assess the needs? I mean, it's been, uh, I guess, about four months or a little over four months since the earthquake struck. What are some of the needs that your credit cooperatives still have? Well, uh, new structures, that is the most important one because as I have mentioned, uh, we, have, um, we have so many structures that have been destroyed or completely damaged. So uh, we need to build new ones. Uh, that is one thing. And apart from that, we also need to, um, well, we, we help our uh, cooperative personnel living in the region to have safe uh, sh shelters. So they, I mean, that's another issue that we are trying to help. It's not a direct uh, duty of the cooperatives, but you know, uh, since we are a family, uh, we have to take care of our colleagues there. So we are also building housing uh, for them, houses for them. Um, that is another thing. Um, well, basically um, structures, uh, new buildings to, uh, to be built and that requires a lot of uh, finance, of course. Uh, but we are working on this because that is the most immediate uh, need that we need to take care of. I just want to note that uh, Tatiana, there's actually been a uh, power outage where she is, so she has had to drop off at least temporarily. But I, I, Alyssa, I'll ask you because you're so in touch with, with what's going on in Ukraine and um, what are the needs for the credit unions that are there still? I mean, I know they're great and we're continuing to work there, but what are some of the overriding needs right now? Yeah, happy to address that. Um, thanks for the question. So mostly, as I briefly mentioned, but I would uh, provide some more details. Um, for this year, 2023, uh, we understand the war is not over, but uh, more or less, we're trying to think about the recovery of different communities uh, in Ukraine, especially, of course, those communities where we have uh, credit unions who continue to serve their members. And we are talking right now more about the early recovery programs. So the first one, which uh, we have already launched this week, uh, it's about the resilience initiative, which means uh, additional liquidity, 500,000 for um, on lending to uh, vulnerable groups, women and businesses, uh, businesses of displaced people, uh, businesses of returnees, those who left the country at the beginning, but were let's say we can call it safer, uh, relatively safer regions and people continue to come back home and they wanna start businesses. So that's the liquidity to help them. And in addition, of course, we understand how awful um, uh, this war impacts the environment in Ukraine. So another initiative to be supported through um, additional finance is gonna be sustainable finance. Uh, so that people start applying uh, more environmentally friendly practices. One more thing uh, to be uh, hopefully implemented this year um, is going to be more digital component and uh, opportunities for credit unions in Ukraine. Uh, most of them operate on the outdated core banking systems and uh, we will try to help them with getting new ones and in addition uh, potentially launch with a pilot group of credit unions online lending, which is not in place in Ukraine as of now. 
And again, we understand that food security uh, remains a big problem, um, not only for Ukraine, but also globally, as Ukraine uh, provides a lot of um, products worldwide. Um, so to talk about more recovery, we are thinking about launching, um, right now we're working on designing this program to provide a co-finance for agricultural equipment to small and micro farmers um, who are members and borrowers of credit unions. It's a lot to take in and I know a lot of work still needs to be done. So thanks for thanks for giving us that, that big overview. Um, Prachak, another question for you uh, com coming in from the audience. Are there any changes on the part of the state regulator in Turkey to improve regulatory conditions, taking into account these events that occurred as a result of the disaster? And if so, specify what that is exactly and, and do you think it ha has had a positive effect so far? Well, it's being discussed and also uh, there's another discussion on founding a new ministry, Ministry of Disaster, uh, because you know we are living in a we are living in a country uh, which expects to have um, unfortunately more earthquakes in time. Especially, there is one that is expected to be happening in the next ten to thirty years, let's say, in Istanbul and in and around Istanbul. So there's a lot of discussion going on, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is not a regulatory, regulatory change at the moment. But I might be mistaken, so. Is that something that your organization, your uh, association is likely going to request or, they are, or are they requesting any kind of regulatory relief right now? For what? I couldn't get that first. Oh, that's okay. I, I was just curious if if the if your organization, if Terum Credit was asking the government for any sort of regulatory relief right now. Yeah, I mean we are in touch with the governmental offices. So uh, because you know uh, there there is agriculture, I mean the, the area is a an important agriculture hub. So Anything that would happen there or elsewhere in Turkey will affect the economy and the, the food system directly. So uh, we are also in touch. We, we share our knowledge uh, because we have such a wide network in the in the country. Uh, we can really uh, quickly um, respond to the the needs, and also we can have access to. Um, understand the needs in the region. So we share it. Uh, we share our know-how with the government. Um, yeah, I mean, there should be a lot, a lot to do. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, it's important to have that cooperation for sure. Mm -hmm. We don't have any more questions. Alyssa, I don't know if there is anything else that you'd like to impart uh, before we, we sign off here. I think we're good. Um, we had another question in the Q&A session more about the, the history of the movement in Turkey. Um, so more about um, how the movement appeared and the principles of work, because we understand it's not the, the classical credit unions, as we call them, uh, across the globe. So maybe, Porchak, if you have another moment to explain us more in detail. Um, how it's organized and how it actually emerged in the movement. Just a, a, another thing to, to discuss. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for chat. Welcome. Thank you for the question. Um, well, uh, Agricultural Credit Cooperatives was founded actually during the Ottoman time. And today, the first location was also <laughs> in, in Serbia. Well, back then it was the, uh, it was the Ottoman Empire. So uh, it started there, but then moved into Anatolia as well. And with the foundation of the Republic of Turkey, uh, it's, it's spread a lot. And now we have a wide network. Uh, so the main aim is to uh, improve agriculture. And in order to do that, we provide not only loans, but also agricultural inputs. Uh, so our farmers can become a member, and by becoming a member, they can uh, meet their needs through our cooperatives. They can uh, get 
they say fertilizers, seeds, feeds, animal feeds, and, and so on and so forth. And after the harvest, they can pay their debts uh, by selling their products to our cooperatives at market prices, uh, or they can sell it uh, in the market and then pay back their debts to us. Uh, that's how we are structured. So it's not just giving uh, loans, but also providing them with agricultural inputs. And we also uh, have um, this product purchasing unit. Uh, we purchase the produce of our members, and then we have 19 companies, I, as I have mentioned. And through the, I mean, at their facilities, we process the produce and then market the products through our uh, cooperative supermarkets. So it's a, a, a huge settlement and a huge network, I would say. Yeah, I mean, that is a, that's an operation I don't think any of us in the United States certainly can imagine and probably not in many other parts of the world because that is, you guys, when we talk about cooperativism, you guys are kind of doing it all. So it's pretty remarkable from that respect. Um, that is a, probably going to be the last question that we have. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up a little bit early today. Uh, Alyssa, thank you so much for uh, guiding us through and Burchak as well. And Tatiana, unfortunately, again, as, as is happening a lot in Ukraine these days, did lose power. So she was unable to reconnect with us. But um, please thank her for us, Alyssa, and, and pass along our, our uh, appreciation and, and our, our best wishes for her and for her credit union. We want to uh, let you know that today's event is being recorded. If you want to rewatch it or show it to others, you can refer them to the World Council YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com slash woku. It's going to be available there in just a few hours. And just an FYI, if you, you can hear more about World Council's work in Ukraine and participate in dozens of other education and networking sessions in person this time at our 2023 World Credit Union Conference, which we are co-hosting with the Canadian Credit Union Association. This is in person July 23rd to the 26th in Vancouver, Canada. Registration is still open until July 5th. That's at wcuc.org. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great day.